Hello everyone. Welcome to another podcast. Today we have a truly special guest, somebody with whom you can relate to. In this examination, I have seen nearly 99% of those who write the examination do not make it. You know, the success rate is 0.04%. And among these 99.6% uh, who do not make in this examination to the final list. So what are the options before you? You know, how do you look at the life? How should you look at career options? How should you look at your personal life? So these are the some of the questions even when I was an aspirant and when I didn't make, I used to face them. Somehow I have made my life out of it uh, as part of the insights. And uh, the very idea behind this podcast was to bring stories that would not only inspire you, but would also provide you a template also in a way that uh, you could follow and uh, find your purpose in your life. Similarly, uh, he used to be one of our students and today I am very proud to say that uh, uh, he has reached and still I think he is about to scale many more heights. Uh, his name is Asghar Ali and uh, welcome Asghar. Thank so you. he did this uh, engineering from RV college and then uh, he did a postgraduate diploma in cyber policy from National Law School in Bangalore. And then something interesting happened uh, during COVID, uh, he decided he would do engineering management program from one of the world's topmost university, Northwestern University from Kellogg's. And then uh, he is working currently in Google as a technical program manager uh, in Austin, Texas. Before he pursued his uh, MEM program from Kellogg's, he was working in planetarium as an engineering. Uh, there is a Nehru planetarium, a very beautiful place in Bangalore. So he was working as an engineer. And before that, he was an IAS aspirant, gave six attempts, couldn't make it. He went till interview and then couldn't make it. And there was an issue with his uh, answer copy in between. And he tried to, you know, have a communication with UPSC and you know how UPSC works. But nonetheless, uh, in the end, he was able to be successful. So all these interesting stories uh, behind his success and how he made it happen and uh, what was the thought process behind his journey, we will all explore. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for accepting the invitation and uh, being part of it. Thank you, sir. Thank you. It's an opportunity and uh, I'm really honored to be here. So I no, I'm really the... proud of like, you know, when I heard about your story, I was so excited because these are unusual stories. These are not because people uh, think linearly. And when I see somebody thinking out of the box and uh, making success out of box thinking, it really excites me. So how did uh, this all happen? We'll go into UPSC journey. But right now I want to know what exactly you were doing and how did that happen? That's like a lot of questions there. <laughs> so, but yeah, I will try to keep it uh, short. So currently, I'm, as you rightly mentioned, like I'm working at Google as a technical program manager. Uh, I manage uh, multiple programs uh, for Google networking team and uh, I'm, I'm a region lead. So Google has multiple regions, network regions. So you are a region lead. Yeah, so Amer region includes all the Google offices and data centers in North and South America, all the countries responsible for. That is nearly like two continents. Yes, it's two continents and uh, hundreds of offices, although I can't tell the exact number, but yeah, it comprises hundreds of offices and multiple data centers. Mm -hmm. And also that's the region which has the Google headquarter as well. It's, it's a very uh, profound role, which even I was surprised the moment I took up on the very first day, they said that this and all are the things that you would be doing. So yeah, currently I'm in the team, it's been nine months now, and uh, it's a global team uh, because it's Google Global Networking. Uh, it's a interesting job uh, as far as, uh, applying the managerial skills as well as the technical skills are concerned. So that fusion is what interested me in this role. And yeah, before that, as you rightly mentioned, uh, I did my MEM program. So it's not only from Kellogg. Kellogg is like one of the school under Northwestern University. So part of my courses were in Kellogg and uh, part of my courses were in the engineering school, which is McCormick School of Engineering. So yeah, this is the program that I did like from Northwestern University in Evanston. Now, how did you end up there? Because last time when I saw you, we were in planetarium. And I remember uh, calling you so many times. You yourself were you know, inviting me and my family because I have two kids. Yes. To visit planetarium and you know see the things. And it happened actually. And you facilitated that. Thank you so much for that. Anytime. So sir. that was there in my memory. Like you were there in planetarium as an engineer. And I used to see your posts on Facebook and sometimes in status. You were enjoying that role also. Now suddenly from you know Nehru planetarium to Austin in Google. How did that uh, transpired. 
yeah that's a uh, very interesting question and uh, something if you would have asked me two years or yeah perhaps two years back even i would have not been having an answer uh, i just took the next steps uh, so so covid happened in 2020 and at the same time i was also uh, doing my postgraduate diploma program at national law school in india i mean national law school of india in bangalore here so as i was doing that program i also thought there is so much to learn uh and civil services no doubt it teaches you a lot of things but still when uh, we are in the process we have that uh, understanding that civil services it's like everything under the sun and you read everything under the sun and it's like you know everything but trust me it's a myth the moment you go to the other side and see the world uh there are lots of things that you have not learned and uh, that's what uh, that's what exactly i learned when i went to a program like cyber laws and cyber forensics in national law school and that made my interest uh, more curious in learning new developments in uh, cyber related matters and also not only that because i had about 8 uh, to 9 years experience uh, before i went into this program i thought like going to the next level will require a new set of skills so that's the managerial or administrative skills what you would call here of course like natural pro- promotions is one way and the other way is learning the new developments that would have happened and for that i would have to go into a university sort of an environment so i thought like yeah let me go there and do that so it was uh, not very well planned but covid allowed me time to think through the processes and uh, what we should be taking in terms of the application process what would be the eligibility requirements so i thought yeah i am well placed uh, and that confidence of understanding that yes it can also be done is what i went and gave it a shot and got grace things still in place and i got a good scores in the entrance so, test okay so while thinking this uh, didn't your age come into picture like because after age 32 most of them don't think about you know going for higher education they want to settle in a job get married and that is the priority for most of the people and uh, when you had crossed 32 from where did you get the courage you know you will go and do these courses continue in higher education and from there maybe uh, in a private organization how did that happen so yeah a uh, private organization was not something which i was precisely wanting mm. because I, that was one of the option like i was open for international institutions and all. but to answer your in first question like how did that happen at age 32 in the law school i could see people at 40 45 years who had come to do that program and many officers as well from services who are actively in service so that's when i thought like okay age would not be a big barrier but yes when you are going to foreign universities it might be a barrier but uh, when i analyzed the profile of different universities especially in this program engineering management system design and this type of programs i saw two universities in us which met the criteria where they wanted people with higher experience so one is massachusetts institute of technology mit and the second one is northwestern so these two universities are the most respected universities in us as well as globally and uh, they met the criteria that i was exactly having so i thought yeah let me try there and that's how i ended up uh, even though age was not a barrier so and it is all mindset so if you think that in a linear way as you put it uh, that at 30 you have to do this 35 you have to do that then yeah you would be defined by what you are doing so because you remember me as a planetarium employee i'm really humbled for that opportunity it was really a great opportunity to work with some of the top scientists in india as well as abroad for how many years you worked there uh, it was close to 7 years 8 months almost 8 years there i got an opportunity to interact with top scientists in india and as well as in the world you can't be fixated to one position or something so the job gives you social identity as we what study in civil services but social identity is uh, not something which is imposed from outside you can build your own social identity so they call it personal branding or whatever like you can give it multiple names but you can always change your path mm. so whether you want to go from government to private private to government so it's all about at that instance of time with the knowledge and the opportunities that you have you have to decide so that's how i decided covid was a big reason i would say that was unheard that the indian railways would be stopping uh or something of that sort so first one month yes just like everyone i did like binge watching of netflix amazon prime whatever but then like i thought okay i am not going to have this type of i mean at least like probability wise it is not possible that such opportunity will come again so i wanted to capitalize on that like once in a uh, century opportunity so i took up like baby steps like taking up one step at a time and this and in this process like there was one friend who helped me throughout the journey and uh, 
like they were also part of this uh, covid uh, social entrepreneurship and then activism and all those uh, sort of things so they were like helping there was a team uh, which was built uh, as a civil society team which involved government servants as well as like uh, private sector people so there when i met like people like that's when i got to get so you ideas. volunteered for covid work so there yes. you met these people yeah i met these people and they were from different walks of life so that made me understand okay there is another side which can be explored so and although i had that initial thought that got more better crystallized when i interacted with them so then i took that initial steps okay let me give gri let me give tofel and then let me go write my statement of purpose so of course like whatever upsc knowledge that i had prepared i wanted to put it for a good use and so that all know, the, all the knowledge you had acquired over the years yes as part of upsc preparation so how did that help you totally helped me at every stage as you rightly said 1% or less than 1% clear civil services and that becomes their identity but for those who don't clear i would say it's an asset that you can capitalize without even letting others know where your knowledge is coming from what is the true source of your knowledge so for me civil services helped not only in the application process in terms of writing the statement of purposes or giving the interviews but also it's it brings you a change in mindset of how you think it gives you more structured thinking that's an asset irrespective of which field you are in whether you are in government whether you are in private sector whether you are in some other academic so the structured thinking is something very important and i use it even to this day it helped me in my application process it helped me when i was doing my masters it helped me in my interviews uh, for companies like google that's how i used my civil services knowledge so so what was your score in gi how did you prepare for these exams yeah it's a pretty straightforward process i would say unlike civil services which has lots of uh, open ended things so uh, gre exam is a very structured exam they test you basically on a little bit of vocabulary and critical thinking of how to use that vocabulary on the verbal side of things and then on the quant side of thing like it's a pretty much like 10th class uh, math i would say uh, yeah english should be a little bit like on a more tougher level compared to quants for people from engineering background uh, but nevertheless it's a something manageable task if you prepare it in a structured way So uh, yeah, uh, to answer your question on score, I got about three twenty seven in GRE. Uh, mm -hmm. That's like one sixty one in verbal and one fifty six in points. So that's a very good score, one three twenty seven. Yeah, good or bad is a relative word. <laughs> I would say it puts me in the top ten uh, percentile of people who take mm -hmm. the exam. So because uh, universities are not too much worried only about the score, score. in GRE, uh, they have a very comprehensive, holistic approach for your evaluation. So where GRE scores and TOEFL scores are just part of the process. so your statement of purpose how well you have communicated how the program will be fulfilling the delta and how you you are thinking in terms of responding in the interviews all these things make the components of application decision but uh, why did you do a post graduate diploma in cyber law like you were working in space uh, department i mean planetarium yeah that's a good question so, as you mentioned like i was working as an engineer there and planetarium's role was very versatile so although i had set of uh, regular functions that i would be doing but uh, it involved mainly managing the technical side of infrastructure in planetarium i was responsible for the cyber related uh, regulations to be followed by the planetarium so that's when i was made this nodal officer for cyber matters uh, and that made me think okay if i have to perform well in that job i need to have awareness about the laws related to that field and uh, when i go and when i went and explored the opportunities i thought like law school provided a very good program uh, which was uh, a hybrid sort of a program where some classes will be online some classes offline and it was matching my working schedule as well so i thought yeah why not so, so was there any entrance for nls or uh... yeah for pg diploma there was uh, no entrance i mean as an entrance exam or anything but yeah they do uh, require you to have certain eligibility criteria met like you need to have graduated like degree. engineering stream yeah, not exactly engineering i think engineering yes they fit the bill but i think there are other programs some also. job experience also i don't think job experience was required i'm i'm sorry like i'm not really aware of the eligibility criteria but they do really need one degree to be completed mm -hmm. before you go into post graduate diploma okay so that was one of the clear requirements that i remember you said that like 6 to 7 years you worked in planetarium uh, so that which means when you were an aspirant you landed that job yes right uh, like when did you start your preparation and uh, after how many years or attempts you thought that you should you know get a job we need to get this job and how did you manage with the job like remaining attempts okay so that's a good question so after my engineering i worked in a private company for about 6 months and then i thought okay let me 
venture into civil services. So in 2011, I started my preparation. Uh, for two years, I prepared and both the times I cleared prelims, but I couldn't clear mains. Uh, then I thought after two years, uh, let me do some job. But I did not want a job which would be intensive in terms of uh, hours that I would be putting or it would be mentally demanding. So that's when uh, I thought I should take up something where I have interest. I like teaching and I like science, uh, physics and those other things. So that's when I uh, started my job at base educational services, which trains students on IIT yeah. entrances exam. So I was teaching there as uh, I mean I was teaching as a physics faculty there. Uh, so that job eventually landed me in planetarium because uh, after doing job for one year there, uh, Bangalore planetarium had invited uh, uh, like applications for a role in engineering division. So I applied and fortunately I got that was one position. So. And that job really fit the... So this was in the 2014? 14, 14. 14 January. And then you restarted preparation. I was preparing in 13 as well. Yeah. When I was teaching at base. Right. Uh, that year I cleared mains and I went to interview. So in 2013 exam, that is 14 interview. 14. So at the same time, I joined new job at Planetarium as well. And Planetarium team and leadership was really, very really supportive of my aspirations. At the same time, they gave me autonomy to do the job uh, and bring in new ideas to in the job. So that is something which I like. So it was not, I, I never saw it as a job. I saw it as a passion at work for which I was getting paid. So on one side, it helped me get some work experience so that my resume did not look blank there. And at the same time, I was doing a job which I was liking. And my job essentially involved lots of things where I was updated with what is happening in science and converting that into a layman's term because that's exactly planetarium type institutions are for. So when I did that, my own knowledge increased. And this knowledge is, again, part of a section in civil services. So yeah. why not? So you get three attempts well in the job. I would say it was uh, four attempts. Like totally I read seven mains. You wrote mm-hmm. seven mains? Yes. So I gave uh, two interviews in civil services and one interview on uh, Deputy Central Intelligence Officer. Like that's again a UPSC yes. uh, conducted examination in which I got into a reserve list. But uh, yeah, I did not go there. And like, like that's when like all this... Uh, covid thing happened and so your last attempt was in civil services it was 2017 i believe 17 17 okay so 18 like was the yeah. results yeah correct correct so i remember like our conversation during that time something with a bad paper i think that was in 14 15, 15. so and i had to change my optional from public administration to political science political science relations. Yeah. no you were unhappy with the evaluation part yeah i felt like uh in 2013 and 14 was the time when public administration was the correct. average course correct. in the public administration optional dropped very drastically and uh, as i was reading the newspaper like just a couple of weeks back i saw the number of aspirants who are taking up public administration has drastically reduced Come to back. a point where it, it is, is thousands around, no 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 it is around 700 is it okay yes. <laughs> so they, they said that like what was once upon a time 7000 number in mains has dropped to close to 1000 number correct, like correct. in pubbad mm. so that's the kind of trajectory for pubbad it was and i was yeah a little bit unhappy and to good that you brought up the topic of me writing to secretary of UPSC. Yeah, yeah, right. so these are the things i felt somewhere helped me i am proactive in whatever I try to do. So I never go by the fact that like, okay, UPSC did not select me. So that is the end of it or something. So I thought like, why not let, maybe there might be some mistake or something. I wrote to the secretary and the usual response people thought was they would not be responding. But coincidentally, when I followed up, they did respond dead and they said that uh, there is no process for re-evaluation or something, but we can do the retotaling sort of a thing. Yeah, that all those activities that I did right. So it helped me remove the fear of reaching the authorities or anyone. So you can reach out to anyone is what I thought, like whether it is secretary of UPSC or whether it is some other country's prime minister, it doesn't even matter. So it's all about how proactive you are in terms of reaching out to- No, that's a very good point you are making because that is something I witness uh, every day. There are students, uh, again, we have this general mindset of, you know, complaining. Yeah. Uh, what we do is that you know we complain about certain against some institution against some in- individuals so in our private spaces in our regular conversations but i think uh, the way you uh, proactively took step 
So if we all take that, it can be at institution, like you know, somebody coming and asking me something. Yes. As a student, instead of you know deciding among themselves, or uh, some of us you know reaching out to authorities when we see certain injustices or you know mistakes, yes. wherever it is. I think that the world will be a lot better place. I think. As I was saying, we should not be fearing to reaching out to authorities or leaders when you have like some genuine request to make. If it's out of uh, a social interest. Uh, motivation that you are doing so in this case it was uh, as the ambassador took note and he took steps to ensure that all the visas are and they expedited the process of visa processing and they got the visas in one month which is unheard of Correct. when it goes through 221g and that eventually led me to build a network once i went to us so i connected to that ambassador because he got retired here and he moved to us now he is a uh, chairman of us india business council so we we get got in touch because of this particular touch basing that i had done like uh, although not directly indirectly because i never uh, sent that letter because i got my visa and i was not impacted but those who had impacted see it was nothing illegal or anything like it was just a part of the process all we were requesting was expediting it because students should be losing out one year they saw that it was a very valid request and they expedited no oh, this is the other side of the story i mean we we assume that you know there may be mistake on our side or there may be uh, something wrong yes so when we don't communicate we don't realize that uh, other side is willing to help you actually if you don't In ask you don't get exactly most of the cases you know uh, whether it is some service provider or whoever it is they will be willing but they will not be aware of the problem exactly so when you reach out when you communicate your problem so the help actually comes so when when people come seeking help in my capacity i try to do sometimes i tell them uh, go and communicate you know there are uh, uh, influential people there are public figures there are yes. responsible people in, in your society in your community if you go and share them whatever problem you are going through actually they will come and help absolutely it's a very good uh, insight i mean very good uh, point that you actually uh, came up with when these attempts got over you know of course you had a job in yeah. planetorium that would have given you some confidence but again you wanted to be a civil servant an yes. ias officer so the dream was there like 6 to 7 years so when that didn't happen right how was that moment like when you uh, exhausted your attempt and the, when the age got over the two after writing seven mains and giving two interviews it is like you know maybe one more effort you could have yeah yeah gone yeah. through right whatever be the decisions whatever happened how did you feel when you didn't make in the last attempt and uh, so what went through your mind and uh, how did you reconcile with the fact that you know you are not going to be ias anymore i guess it's the same process for everyone everyone feels bad about what had happened and see that yeah as you rightly said maybe if i would have got one more attempt i would have done that or something but somewhere i did knew that like the probability uh, wise if you see uh, many people would not be getting and i am part of that many it's okay like but my uh, whole motivation when i was preparing right from day one was I wanted to gain as much knowledge as possible, and civil services is one platform which helps you develop that skill throughout the preparation phase. So seven mains, it was not that I was totally preparing for civil services alone. I had my job and I had to do things there as well. All these things was difficult when I got to know that yeah, I will not be like going into civil services. But as they say, sometimes things don't turn up if you see that way. But actually, they would have turned up well for you. And now in the hindsight, uh, as they say, in hindsight, everyone is wise. I I would I am happy with what I have got. Like I I would not be trading it with civil services now. <laughs> ah, of course, obviously, like you know, being a program manager, technical program manager for two continents, especially with respect to a very key aspect of you know their entire process or you know I, I would say existence, you know, that yes. data management and you know data center management. So that that's a good profile. But uh, my next question is going to be related to the. current job so when you say that you know uh, that is what you know excited me like you know planetorium is a small piece of land in bangalore right from there now we were in uh, texas uh, austin so where you know many people would love to go and you know be part of that you know dream journey and then again that's a very big company you know google you know i attribute my insights existence to google yeah i know that <laughs> <laughs> nay nee, honestly like without google there is no insights you know absolutely no not possible uh so i am always grateful for that actually so now when you were managing two continents what exactly you do like what what are the people you you know interact so yeah uh, actually there are uh, not much tech, like confidential things because that are more technical in nature which i will not be speaking about but as far as the interaction is concerned i interact with multiple stakeholders the role of technical program manager requires you to interact with a, a diverse set of people with diverse set of skills 
So in my current role, I have about uh, five project managers working for this programs that I am doing and like they get the job done from multiple engineers who are uh, working in coordination with them. So as a program, I mean, technical program manager uh, for ML region lead, I own programs. So failure or success of those programs depend on me and I will be accountable for these programs. And these programs have hundreds of projects under it. So for example, if I take up one data center, it has multiple sites within it and each site has certain network uh, devices to be maybe uh, replaced or maybe like some new configurations pushed into it and make the whole DC site or office site ready for the next generation networks that we are planning at Google. So facilitating that process is what is my role. At the same time, I need to have clear metrics of what is the progress, where do I stand. So in terms of interaction, it could be engineering team, it could be a vendor like OEM, original equipment manufacturer, like companies like Cisco, Aruba, Arista, and then Juniper Networks, Palo Alto Networks. Apart from these OEMs, I also interact with my own leadership team, like which comprises uh, maybe directors and vice presidents at times. And so you interact with them and get the job then in terms of uh, upgrading the infrastructure, upgrading the devices. Devices and facilitating uh, new programs. Like for instance, like we have certain programs which are aimed towards future. So, so it's like you are at a particular point and you have to reach a particular uh, goal that you have set for yourself. As a company, they have that goal. and. To bridge that gap, you need to facilitate some projects and programs to No, success. see, that's a very big responsibility. Yes. I'm just curious. Again, I'll keep going back to planetarium, right? Don't yeah. mind. So somebody who was managing planetarium infrastructure, like, you know, they're also you were an engineer for planetarium. Yes. And now it's a global job, right? Yes. Continental in proportion. <laughs> you did your MEM program in Kellogg's and directly they put you with a big role. Now, how did that happen? Like, you know, how can somebody put you in a big responsible job? Is it because of what you learned in the university? What they saw in you actually? It's not a one single point. Like university of course did help with, with the managerial skills and project management side of things. But here in planetarium as well, uh, if we see it as a landscape, it may be a single small place in Bangalore. But the impact that planetarium has is nationwide. Correct. So some of the technologies that we introduced uh, were like first in the country. So we use like some of the most advanced data sets to showcase uh, the developments that are happening in astronomy and uh, astrophysics to larger citizens in Bangalore. So this was all part of Google interview. So when they interviewed for this present job. That's what, like I did say about all these things like that I was doing there. Irrespective of what type of role you go into, all they are looking is for transferable skills. Transferable skills can come from anywhere. It can come from a place like insights where you might be managing certain programs for certain things. So they are seeing if you have that aptitude for those skills. In case of engineering management role, which TPM role is, they see that you have good technical judgment and technical skills and also managerial skills. Uh, and the most important thing of it is how you communicate. As I start, said in the beginning of the conversation here, uh, that my role involved understanding new developments in science and communicating it into a lay terms. And trust me, irrespective of science or any other subject it is this skill of understanding a more complicated thing and explaining it in a simple way is a very underrated skill its importance cannot be overstated like if you are able to have this skill trust me you can go to any place and get the job done and what yeah, do you think I mean, answers are yeah i mean this is one of the point of feynman i think the famous exactly. uh, physicist i remember uh, richard reading feynman, richard yeah. feynman saying this you know if you can explain any complex uh, concept or any whatever technology in a very simple words so that is where uh, uh, you are intelligent it is not like you know sounding complex see, see, now how did that help you actually so you were making a point there. absolute skills that i was having here when i was interacting with people here i had to explain them like maybe a high school student or even a phd student i have to go to his level and make him understand at his level so in this job also it's all about communication and understanding what is to be done by whom and delegating the correct responsibility to correct person if you have this skill you can get most of the jobs done so in my current role also, for instance, for the project managers, they do mostly the project management side of things, like how to get the job done and all. Even though they might not be too technically aware, but for me as a TPM, I have to be technically aware whether that person is capable even enough to give me or delegate the job to him. So I always go to a level where, which is most simple when I explain it. So those fusions come very naturally because of the job that I had done at Planetarium and also interacting with diverse stakeholders. 
So that was one of the very important skill, whether it was at my university, which also taught me many skills, which helped me in my interview. So how did you uh, develop these skills? Uh, I remember you telling you were a student council led also. Yeah, that was at Northwestern. Yeah, Northwestern. So when you went from India to uh, US, uh, when you landed in that university, so how was your first day? How did you interact with people and uh, how did you make use of the course itself? I would say it was not one instance. It started right from since your engineering UPSC days. It's a continuous planetarium. Yes. So when you are preparing for UPSC, you actually uh, you have to develop these skills. If you are not developing these skills, you might write very great answers in mains, but in interview you will not be able to maintain that conversation. And they don't want paper tigers. Correct. Who are really good in answer writing but not able to communicate what they are wanting to communicate. Today it's all about not only your like like how you present your skills, Critical but also thinking. how you interact with people, and how on the spot judgments that you make, which are more rational and analytical. And how do you make someone understand at their level? So this is a skill which develops over a period of time, and that's the same thing which happened to me as well. But when I went to Northwestern University, it got fine-tuned, I would say, uh, because it put me in an environment where people from other big organizations came. For instance, my friends were from SpaceX, and then companies like Aramco. Uh, which is one of the largest uh, oil, oil companies in the world. So when you are put in this uh, role play situations, you understand the importance of manner of communication uh, from different positions. So there are many many uh, things leadership role. Leadership roles you have. Uh, I mean the student body. Student leader, right? body. Yeah. Yeah, that's an interesting one. So to answer that question, this type of programs every year there are elections held for uh, the student body councils or different programs at. Uh, at the school level so i got an opportunity to participate in the elections and i'm glad and i'm thankful that like my batch selected me as the president of the student body for the my program and that helped me got get many more opportunities to interact with the uh, business leaders or even government uh, so ambassadors like, and uh, ambassadors. diplomats hmm. yeah indian uh, consulate uh, in chicago uh, where northwestern university also is there are some programs which might be of interest to students which government of india wants to communicate when students are abroad so what were the other opportunities you got like in us it's a little bit different spoon feeding is less in terms of placement so the student has to put 90% of the effort although universities do provide you platform like a place like northwestern or mit will give you immense platform for connecting with alumni or companies or but how do you capitalize that is a skill that you should be good at scale at which how you prepare for these interviews is very different in us and as i said 90% effort comes from the student uh, and university facilitates the process they have career cells they have uh, opportunities where they help you build your resume take mock interviews uh, for different uh, roles that you would be applying so the university does provide opportunities but the companies are uh, really really very much uh, selective in us i would say in terms of so directly landed in google or like you got other opportunities i did have interviews lined up in other places as well like initially when i went to the university i was uh, getting familiarized with what and all are the opportunities other opportunities that i have because i was coming from a government like background so i had to understand what is the ecosystem out there so that's when i got to interact with students from other programs like mbas and then msai which is a ai program so when i interacted with them i understood or categorized the available opportunities mainly into product management which is a tech side technical program management again on the tech side of things and then you have consulting so companies like mckinsey bcg yeah. bain and all those they are the top i, I think uh, yeah in consulting yeah, they are like well known names mm. uh, i would say and then you also have like supply chain related which is one of the most uh, critical roles uh, in the coming days i would say considering mm. how the covid impacted the supply chain network and you also have finance investment banking venture capital private equity all these doors were open so that's what masters program do to you so just to uh, see something uh, again i'm curious so as i said you know like there literally lacks of students without direction you know what to do about their uh, uh, attempts because they may be doing some um, of course uh, mm -hmm. every job is an important job but people will have amb ambitions now you don't give me the figure just tell me like how much you were earning in you know uh, planetarium like how many times you were earning right now like in terms of you know number of times i would say it's a significant uh number uh, compared to what i was because it happened just in two years that is why yeah uh, yeah it was like this so when i was uh, deciding all this movement from india to us and all it was very clear whether you are in india or whether you are in us you have 24 hours a day 
So how you use the 24 hours and the value that gets created out of the 24 hours depends on the ecosystem that you are in. India has immense potential, no doubt about it. But uh, my visit to Germany also made me aware that, okay, let me get the other side of experience in a developed country first. When I planned about US, so I did know that like the salaries will be relatively higher in US. But again, salary is one part of the equation. I would not say don't be motivated only by this. If you are motivated only by this, India also has immense potential to earn that much of money. But the point is, for me, it was mainly about uh, exposure to a new ecosystem and culturally interacting with uh, multiple people uh, and then from different backgrounds and from different type of jobs that they were coming in. So these were my main motivations to go there. Just uh, to put into perspective, like it is like 10 times, 15 times than what you are earning here. Yeah, I would say it comes somewhere between 10 to 15. So what about uh, managing the finance for uh, your course? Uh, how did you, because did you get scholarship or so I have heard that, you know, it takes 30, 40 lakhs uh, to pursue one year course in US. So how did you manage? So yeah, coming from a middle class background, see middle class is like a diverse spectrum. Mm. So you can have a higher middle class. Um, I would say middle, middle class. <laughs> so it took a little bit of effort for me to arrange the finances. But I'm really grateful for people who helped me uh, in terms of uh, facilitating the amount at the right time. But predominantly it was a bank loan from a nationalized bank. Of course, again, like 30 to 40 lakhs that you said, it depends uh, on which university you choose and then what type of program you go into. So all those factors go in. I mean, Northwestern is an expensive university, even by US standards. So it took almost like close to 80 lakhs uh, wow. for my program. But it is like still one third of what an MBA in Kellogg would be costing. Mm. So like finance side of things. Uh, but I would say it was worth an investment. Yeah, as you said, like more than finance, it's more about, you know, the kind I, of I network. I would say if you have the skills, if you build your network, uh, and if you know how to capitalize the network, uh, finances will be taken care of itself. When I was preparing for civil services, the mindset that I carried was very different towards money. Now the mindset that I have towards money is very different. What is the mindset you have now? So for instance, like here it was more towards saving and yeah. trying to minimize my expenses and all this. Once you go and like once you start earning, you should know the financial literacy at that level. So financial literacy is not only about how to use money or like how to do transactions. See, when you're earning in lakhs, your mindset towards money is one thing. When you're earning in crores, your money mindset is different thing. So when you're earning in say thousands of crores, your mindset towards it is different. So I would say current I would look more towards percentages rather than the absolute figures. So if I'm devoting this much of time, what is the return on investment in terms of percentage? That mindset is something maybe which came from my program, but more importantly from my friend who was deep into finances. He is into that field. So he works at Morgan Stanley Bank now. So he taught me like it's very important how you see money because money can be earned, but how do you sustain that money is more important. Mm. And network. The network that you create, very, very, very important. It's more important. It's a very underrated skill in India. I would say like you just focus on the job, you get the job and then like you settle in life. I guess pretty much even in US, that's what most of the people like who migrate from here do. Mm -hmm. But but if you get into interacting with people from different backgrounds. So that is when we get ideas, you know. Ideas. So the diversity of your network matters. So it's not only about Say I know Correct. this officer or that officer or that politician or this politician or so this people engineer. from or different that. backgrounds matter. All the backgrounds you should have good contacts. Yeah, like you were, you were talking about, you know, uh, social networking and uh, building social capital basically. But again, as an uh, UPSC aspirant, uh, what happens uh, is that uh, people are living in their own, you know, shells, huh? in their own cabins, in their own small social uh, setup. And again, uh, the very thinking is... Uh, completely dominated by how to crack the examination so beyond that most people will not have the courage so the question is uh, to move into a right direction if things do not manifest in UPSC so what kind of strategy or you know what kind of thinking do you think you know in hindsight or the way you prepared the way you built your personality and profile so what candidates should do during preparation so that they have these opportunities opening up for them if someone doesn't end up clearing civil services they need to have a backup so this backup is not something like a plan B or something it should start from their own skills like a person has to understand why he's preparing for civil service what are his strengths because civil services draws aspirants from diverse backgrounds. So each person is different there. My case, it was my strong in interest towards science. 
uh, engineering and these sort of things i built upon those as i was preparing for civil services i was very clear that okay if not civil services i can always put my other skills into use so that's one thing where a person has to actively and consciously put effort towards building their own profiles when they are actually preparing for civil services second thing is the network so when you are uh, preparing for civil services you have immense time at the same time there is also a perception built that i don't have enough time i have to cover that syllabus i have to cover this syllabus so there is always like a shortage of time shown to aspirants i would say get out of that mindset go meet people uh, from different backgrounds now once you have made connection with someone try to sustain that connection it's not just that like when you have some work you go and like ask for help and then you have forgot the person so when you build this type of network it helps you capitalize on that network not only for yourself but also for the extended like like others like you can have a skill which can help others so that will be a very important skill i would say how this oh, this is a very important point because uh, as i said earlier no uh, most of the upsc aspirant don't meet other people so it's, they are scared to meet people because they think it's a distraction and uh, yeah it's not really that way it's all about how you look at it the more people you meet i would say this this interaction will help you develop new synergy which will help you give more better outcomes it applies for institution level it applies for individual level in this particular like example that i was taking by this professor no share contractor he said this studies are applied in so many fields and it has found practical application in social no i am seeing the benefit like you know i i think i built entire thing only by interacting with people i would uh, say that so like i mean if you see even the ias network let us take so why do you think like everyone wants to go into civil services and like they get the most maximum of it so there was this person who came at kellogg and he was speaking what makes someone powerful it's like the ability to get allocate resources with widest discretion like it, it, the power is nothing but your uh, maximum discretion to allocate maximum resources to any group that you are interested in so you can build your own network that is something yeah. which i am trying to emphasize in this conversation be proactive in building your network in a way that it's not limited to your four or five civil service aspirants who are preparing along with you and then having the dreams of going to love things happen there that's important yeah that's like part of the goal but what is more important is if civil service happen or doesn't happen you have a network enough to get the things done so that network can be consciously built is what i am trying to say yeah. maybe it might take little bit time more time than maybe civil services would take but having said that you can altogether tap networks which civil servants can't tap because of their own like restrictions or the uh, limitations that they have so what about uh, the future like so you were a technical program manager and uh, so what about uh, the further growth uh, in the orphan how is it yeah it's like uh, google as a organization has like really good opportunity can you become ceo of google someday see google type of companies allow you to grow if you are at right like if you bring in skills and impact they never bother about designations they always see in terms of landed impact what have you done being in this role i think the definition of power i think applies here also the one you gave i would say given this opportunity for you to be in google and use the google's resources what impact can you do not only for company but as a society as a well because google always thinks from billion users perspective so that's what was the part of our training also so whatever you do you have to be very careful in terms of how it impacts the end user so tomorrow a person who is depending on google maps he can end up in wrong place if you take a wrong right. decision like if if you are not careful enough in what you are building so likewise people who rely on uh, health related tools that google is building or even i mean you know like the impact of google i need not even say correct, correct. Like, you have so based on it. the amount of impact you can leave the growth is proportional absolutely so if you are giving contribution they will be more than happy to promote so maybe 15 20 years later you may be the ceo we never know I don't know like uh, I mean like I, that's like too much deep into future because two years before I did not even know that I will be ending up in Google mm. so but the possibility exists I think I believe uh, you can do it because the kind of you know a network you are building and uh, your ability to reach to people and uh, I am seeing that in action actually so even if you don't become important or even if you are just a normal human being that ability itself to get in touch with people Uh, irrespective of who they are where they are so i think if it is part of your personality i think the potential to grow is yeah that is something true and that's exactly what i was emphasizing it's not only building your network or circle around you but also sustaining that so i have friends like from my school days to these days i think it's pretty much with everyone but i would emphasize don't just make like transactional contacts make something tangible out of it and to answer your question about being ceo or anything i would say see ceo has a job to do and that's a important role no doubt about it but 
it doesn't mean that other jobs are not important so my aim would be to whatever opportunities come to me i want to use it 100% efficiently so if i am able to do that even at my current level i know i can create much impact there are immense opportunities to do that it's all about uh, whatever opportunities that are that i will be blessed with i want to make are you happy and satisfied in your job and also what about your uh, if i may use the word superiors or you know your bosses so are they also happy yeah i would say yes i i mean like uh, i am really grateful for whatever i have like been blessed with so far and uh, as far as my managers and higher ups are concerned so they are also like satisfied as far as the recent rating goes like it seems that they are more than happy like so so there is a rating system yes there is a continuous evaluation system and and they are satisfied as well mm. and i have to sustain so the rating is both ways it's not for company to rate me but also for me to uh, understand like how i can use the company resources because company is also interested in my career development so that's something like uh, which they emphasize repeatedly in the trainings and even in the meetings often times so i have to use that and continuously grow from there so there was a time where uh, you know you wanted to become ias officer you know work in rural areas i am sure you would have dreamt about it right yes so now we were in a completely corporate setup so is there a part within you which still says the like no like swadesh like let's go back home and you know lit a bulb in a village something like that absolutely so if you recall the initial conversation that you had uh, the insights existence is based on google so google emphasizes way too much on building uh, small and medium enterprises so now these enterprises can be in a rural part of like like so india or elsewhere so now it's not that like i don't want to come back i would definitely want to come back like uh, at a later point after gaining some experience but at the same time now the way how i look at it is service can be provided from any position that you are having uh, it's not only that civil services is the only route because i see many civil servants reaching out to me when i was doing masters that they want to come to us and they wanted to do that so these are people who are in ias and ips so it's like people are also becoming aware that it, there has to be more cost fertilization on both the sides so i think government of india allows you to do mm-hmm. higher studies uh, in foreign countries i don't know like it was stopped during covid but i don't know that like people have done it and uh, there will be people who will be doing it and some of them have even went to the extent of resigning the job and doing it in mm-hmm. places like cambridge and all those so we have chat gpt yeah and uh, <laughs> so microsoft has acquired it and you have barred so i'm not going to technical so my my more interest is with respect to civil services so now uh, now you sitting in google how do you see this artificial intelligence uh, impacting you know the exams like civil services or education system in india i just want to know the ai is going to have an impact and it is not going to it is already having impact the loan that you get sanctioned with somewhere down the line it is the decision is taken by the ai there so this is they say the system is taking the decision i would say there will be a growth more and more uh, in terms of uh, generative ai content because that's where the noise is currently being made and lots of investments are being made but having said that this and all like help you make your life easy but they don't create knowledge they just synthesize the knowledge that is already existing and provide you an answer with it so if you see th- how this uh, large language models work they use like transformers and then like it's all about probabilities at the end of the day and you see if this word is used and what should be the next word based on the topic that you have given that's what like there is like a wikipedia set like data set type of an like data that you train it with and then it gives you some question that you ask it gives you the synthesis of that knowledge but the real knowledge i would say lies in understanding how to use this type of developments that are happening uh, the impact will definitely be there in terms of content creation and then education yes uh, on both the sides i would say positive as well as negative of course we are discussing lots of things i remember uh, an occasion where you know uh, you came and uh, requested you know for evaluating papers here pro bono so you didn't want any remuneration like why did you decide to become evaluator at inside service actually it was in my own interest as well i will be honest mm. <laughs> so my reasoning was like i was in a job and i was not getting enough time to do the answer writing but at the same time to improve upon my answers i wanted to understand the kind of answers that are coming in in the exam so inside being a place where many students come and write a series being a evaluator is a vantage point where i get a peep into all the answers and all quality of answers and kind of answers that students are writing so that was the main reason why i so 
as part of this entire examination preparation uh, definitely it has enriched you you gain knowledge and uh, you gained uh, certain experiences so today which of these are coming you know very handy for you in your current job if you see the civil services exam notification people don't emphasize like the information which upsc gives but they depend a lot on what coaching centers say but if you see clearly the gazette notification they say what they are looking for in the answer answer where you are able to take a st- opinion on conflicting socio economic goals in a structured way precise precisely succinct manner so all these are the hints that upsc is giving you to have you in your answers so this skills if you see are not only relevant for civil services alone these are the skills exactly a job in google or like a job in mckinsey would be requiring so that's the reason if you see the interview selection process of civil services or interview selection process of mckinsey or interview selection process of google they always give you open ended questions they never ask you a very closed set of questions those questions lead you to answer based on what your real personality is so if your answer is structured succinct concise precise to what you are answering and backed by data it will be appreciated whether it is upsc or google that skill is what is helping me to answer your question so and also to interact with your clients also and uh, to come up with ideas in your uh, yes. present role it may be coming handy yes coming handy and for instance we were uh, we are required like when i was doing masters i was required to write briefs on some articles and so that's exactly what your mains answers are so it was like so quick cut as i said uh, frequently in this uh, like whole interaction the subtle nature of help that your preparation does it's 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 really insane so we should know how to apply it you know when to apply where to apply yes. and what about your association with insight say yes so uh, we started like, in 2014 january so because it, you started I, i was there like since almost like the not the exact initial days but yes 15 i think from the initial yeah. days when insights was just starting out uh, as a small like unit there mm. and i am really like uh, amazed by the scale and also uh, it's really inspiring to see the growth that insights has had So I made a good connections and network here as well. So apart from the civil services learning that happened mm. uh, through my answer writing and your feedback, mm. so 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 yeah, this is my thing, and I wish all the very best <laughs> for insights to stay more. Right. Active. I uh, keep you know suggesting students who come to me and tell you know after three attempts, four attempts, what to do. So now I have a clear uh, guidance for them. Give one or two serious attempts, you know, with all intense preparation. and then start looking at you know avenues like this you know higher education opportunities within india maybe there are good institutions which are offering uh, courses in various disciplines nowadays i mean if somebody has developed interest as you did in cyber law there could be a course in that artificial intelligence and so many and then i am recommending people if they have money and you know if they can get scholarship so go to uh, different universities i am very sure like you know this whole podcast what we did would have cleared all of their doubts and i think uh, many of will Uh, i think will definitely approach you and i hope uh, you will help them facilitate and this is one of my concern area because this is a large pool of students you know i don't want them to go i don't want them to waste their knowledge you know i, I think if it is properly channelized and if they are, they maintain the ambition and if they scale it up they can do wonders to the world and you know to the country absolutely yeah hmm? so i i would suggest it's all about the mindset that you carry towards uh, anything in life so civil services is just a fa- phase of it uh whether you clear it or whether you don't clear it uh it's life is going to be there so how you look at it like whether it is success failures so nothing is permanent so it's very important that we have a more uh, humble outlook towards life and uh, we all are coexisting so nobody is superior nobody is if you are happy with your life i think you have achieved your goal having a good mindset and optimistic mindset towards anything in life is what would be uh more helpful if i would have not prepared for civil services i would have been a different person uh maybe things would have unfolded in a different way but having said that if you have prepared well prepared for civil services i'm pretty sure you will do something good in your life whether you get into civil services or whether you don't get into civil services and if you don't get into civil services the world is yours and there are lots more opportunities to make uh impact as i said and for yourself and as also for the community around you the people around you and and there will be orbit shift trust me that orbit is much higher than what you would be doing in civil services great so 
Thank you, friends. I really had a great conversation with uh, Sgar today, and I'm sure uh, watching this entire episode, you also got many ideas and uh, inspirations. Not just uh, look beyond UPSC, but also realize you know many possibilities that. life itself offers to you and uh, to scale many heights uh, please dream big uh, dream higher and uh, there are opportunities available what i learned from this podcast is that uh, you need to reach out to the people you have to come out of the comfort zone you don't hesitate to seek help if you want help from others uh, don't hesitate to help others i think all of this will collectively help you and uh, once again thank you so much for uh, really sharing all of your ideas and uh, as i said in the beginning really proud of you know what you are achieving and what you are about to achieve and i asked it as a question and i would like to see you uh, much more than ceo of google someday and i i believe i am basically a person who believes in all the possibilities and uh, wish you all the best and uh, thank you so much thank you thank you for the opportunity sir it, it it was really a very interesting conversation and after a long time that i was able to have a good conversation with you thank you and thank yeah, you yeah i will be more than happy to assist the students or anyone who reaches out to me in whatever way i can But yeah, as I said, like there are lots of opportunities. No, you are our ambassador in America, no? So we will send you <laughs> <laughs> many students. So as you said, no, you you like to reach out to people, and uh, and we are going to capitalize on that. Yeah, I, there are students who did reach out to me, and mm. I was uh, I did have interactions with them. But yeah, I'll be more than happy with whatever time and uh, effort that I can give. Okay. But thank so, you for the opportunity. Again. So wish you all the best. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, friends.